Hi, it's Roger here with episode 40 of Entrepreneur TV. And we are going to, in this episode, take a tour of the future. This is an Earthship. Uh, it was built by Mike Reynolds, who came up with the idea of Earthships. Uh, this is in Taos in New Mexico, which is where I am right now. And this is part of the greater world community, which is the largest sustainable community in the world, uh, where every one of these homes, there's about 60 of them here, are off the grid. So we're about to see what happens when you take your entire home off the grid, what it would look like, and more importantly, what would we end up doing in a world in the future where we may not even have jobs? You know, what happens when solar power becomes so cheap that we can all basically afford free energy? What happens when we can grow our own food, which is what happens here in uh, Taos as well? Uh, what happens when robots might be doing our jobs? Many of you have been to my fast forward events and know we talk a lot about the future trends that are coming and uh, there's no doubt we'll be look, uh, looking at the world differently in the future. Here is one possibility of what life could look like and the potential of what happens when we put art and design into everything from sustainability to green energy and we put it all into one spot. So here we are in Taos. You can see there uh, the mountains, the New Mexico mountains. You can see a whole bunch of different homes. Maybe you can't even see them. They're actually all half buried into the sides of uh, the hills here. And there's a very good reason for that, as we're going to see. And here's the entrance, as you can see, right here as well, to lead us inside. Um, so I've come here for a few days with my family. Uh, Kathleen, my eldest daughter, she actually came to, we'll go through the other door. She actually came through um, here to study at the academy. So they have an Earthship Academy here. And uh, this is uh, where you actually get to learn all about the sustainable build. And she actually physically got involved in the build of one of these Earthships. So here we are in the entrance. This is what the entrance looks like. And as you can see here, we're about to go uh, through. There's like, as you can see here, like on the one hand, we can go this way and it takes us through down a pathway, which is all an indoor greenhouse. Or we can go this way, which takes us into the one of the bedrooms, right? So this is called the red room. And uh, this is actually starting to get built already into the side of the hill, which means that when it's really kind of snowy here in the winter, um, you don't actually need any um, elect uh, electricity or power for your heating. This is one of the bathrooms. These here are all uh, bottle tops, right? So these are all basically um, waste being used as art. And you're gonna see a lot of this in here is recycling everything around so that we're not actually having to go out there, spend a lot of money on new material. And this is what it looks like when you actually look into the main living area. And you can see here, we've got all of the greenery. There's animals living in here, there's the birds. Uh, and then we've got also, this is two of the beds in the bedroom. Uh, and at the moment, we're staying here for a couple of days because uh, when it's available, we're able to actually rent it. And the Phoenix was put together by Mike as an example of what's possible um, when you bring all of these best practices together. And he's been at it since the 1970s. So here we can see we're actually going into the main uh, living area now. So you've got, on the one hand, the kitchen going through there. Uh, you've got the main living area here where you can see um, this here is a fireplace. And next to the fireplace, you then have got uh, a uh, waterfall. The water actually goes down, the, water, the fire comes up, um, so you've actually got uh, heating when you need it uh, and it keeps everything warm. But this place is already so warm, even though it's actually quite cold here at the moment. And you can see here we're actually looking all the way out so that when the, these all face to the south, so the sun comes in, warms it up, um, and there's two layers there as we'll see as we go through there. So you've actually got an uh, outside layer where you can actually grow your food as well. Uh, this here is coming into the main dining area. Um, here's Teresa and Luke. Hi, Luke. Yeah. Uh, and we're, we're going to go through here to see that you've actually got a doorway that leads through um, to the main work area. Uh, and in here, you can actually see the tires, right? So here's the tires which are built into the side. So the tires allow you to be able to actually create a scaffold. And then you actually then compact it down. And this creates the stomal mass. And here are the um, bottles. Uh, everything from power, which is all self-sufficient, to water, which is self-sufficient. So we're kind of going through here. Here's some of Mike Reynolds' original artwork, um, which he kind of keeps stored back here as well. You're gonna see here, all of the equipment and everything is actually to pump the water through because they catch the rainwater 
the water comes down, it cycles through, so you've actually got clear drinking water. Uh, it then goes through into kind of the first stage, which is grey water, which is when it kind of gets kind of used in the basin and so on. And then it then allows you to um, recycle it again, uh, so that it gets, gets used in the toilets, and then it becomes black water, and then it actually goes into septic tank, where just through a biological system, um, it actually is able to then fertilize the grounds. So you don't have any water pipes coming in or out of the place either. So no power lines, no water, um, and, and that's why it's called nurture. And they're now actually building these all over the world. So you can actually have these um, uh, plans and organize it wherever you are in the world to actually create one of these things. And they're designed in such a way that it's actually fairly easy, well, once you know how, to build these without any special equipment. So all of this was built without any kind of like huge cranes or anything like that, um, and, uh, and just a whole team of people. Here's another bedroom. So this one here is a bedroom where you can see lots of, you know, lots of things you can start to do when you actually start thinking, what can we do with junk to reuse it again? So that we don't have, like, one of the things that happened was after the um, tsunami in the Adaman Islands, they asked Mike and his team to come over they came over and there was like junk and waste everywhere, but people didn't have homes and actually used this technology as a way for people to actually build their homes again. So um, here, this goes through to another bathroom here. As you can see, each one of these is designed very, very organically. There's the bath there. <laughs> and uh, it actually looks right out into the greenhouse area. And I'll show you a bit more as we go around. But the key thing here, and the reason I'm sharing this with you, is a lot of people think we're all kind of like destined to live in cities. And you know, I believe the, the opposite, you know, it's like I've spent so much of my time in Bali and um, I believe as Buckminster Fuller did, it's all about your environment, right? If you actually have an amazing environment that you brought up in that informs all your creativity and it becomes the playground in which you play. So if you're in a concrete jungle, there's a good chance you can actually start thinking about things which are very unsustainable, but you start going into an environment like this where everything's sustainable, um, it isn't long before you start building your businesses so they're sustainable, so that you're building your community so sustainable. So here we actually are on the outside now, and this here, there's a turtle in here somewhere as well. Um, there's like lots of fish down here living. There's uh, birds up here, the birds, and uh, and then there's there's outside living areas where you can live, as, or, or like where you can actually study and work. Here's Kathleen. Hello, Kathleen. Uh, how did you enjoy the um, academy when you're here? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome because it, it had the hands-on aspect of like actually constructing our ships and then also we learned about all the systems and, and being able to bring them overseas and kind of like how that works with the organization and then how to put more systems together. Electric. So you so you actually helped build one of the ones around here somewhere, right? Yeah, way, way out there, um, closer to the office. There's like a five bedroom or five room with a double garage. It was like the first model of it. So awesome. it. Very cool. All right. Thank you, Kathleen. So uh, we actually played um, hide and seek here last night. <laughs> the three kids and I, when it got dark, we were like hiding in all sorts of places here. Uh, perfect place to come to do that. And um, there is actually a turtle. Uh, in here called Herbie. We haven't found him yet, so he's still playing hide-and-seek with us as well. So coming outside here, you can see that we're actually looking right over um, the vast plains uh, of Taos. And you can see here there's a fire pit. Uh, it's going to get a bit windy here. But I just want to show you here as well, like we just had some fresh eggs this morning because we have got our chicken here as well, right? So our chicken are all running around here. Hello there and they all are um, inside laying eggs. Uh, not all of them, but some of them. And then let me just show you outside what it looks like with the, it's really beautiful how everything grows here because this is all coming from the, um, the water system here that actually creates a very, very fertile area for, uh, for everything to grow, including humans. <laughs> and so up here, you'll see well, what happens is um, as we go around, Everything's kind of like in a burn. It's like it's actually into the side of the hill. So in the in the summer it stays cool. In the winter it gets um, uh, it gets very warm inside, which is why your power bills are so low. I mean, it has everything. It has Wi-Fi, it has TV, but all of it is powered through the solar power here. Um, and I'm just going to show you up here. This is the roof, and you can see the solar panels which are there. There's the solar panels, 
and all of this roof space, all of it here, uh, is capturing rainwater. So all the water comes through, it comes down here. Uh, you can see even like the from the front of the house, it comes through in this really nice little aqueduct, drops down, uh, and then gets captured and goes through a filter system. Uh, and uh, even the way they actually weight the skylight so that you can actually control the temperature inside by just kind of like pulling a little lever and um, the skylights open and close. All of this is about the fact that one day, I don't think too long in the future, we all are going to have this opportunity to actually live like this if we wanted to, where you don't have to be dependent on all these high costs to be able to actually live in life. The cost of rental, you know, the cost of electricity, the cost of power, the cost of all these different things that we've kind of learned in the city is what we need. You come to a place like this and you realize someone like Mike who lives here has no costs. He gets his own food, he gets his own power, he has his own shelter. What happens when you don't have to work for money? Because the end point becomes something really interesting. There's a couple of things happening around the world at the moment. There's this concept of basic income. Uh, there's a uh, in uh, Holland, there is a city called Utrecht, which is actually experimenting with this right now, giving everyone enough money they don't have to work. So if you're giving people enough money that they don't have to work, what will they end up doing? Will everyone get lazy and just sit at home watching TV? Or will they start actually focusing on things that are purpose-driven? You know, what would you do if you got to a point where you didn't have to work anymore, right? Would you just kind of like sit around, go on holiday, or would you do something purposeful and meaningful? Would you do something that's your true art? And if you were to think about what that was you would do, think about it in terms of how much are you already doing that today? Because the key thing is if we're already thinking in that way, we're already thinking like, what am I doing which is my true art? I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it for the love of what I'm doing. There's a pretty good chance we're already gonna get on the right, on the right path in, in life as well. So that would be my last message to you. If you're starting with your art, not with, what do I have to do to get by? And if you know that everything is coming to a point, like even solar power, we've got to solar power grid parity, which means it's actually cheaper than fossil fuels in like 30 countries around the world already. Like it's come down like 50% in the last three years. So countries like Australia, China, India, Germany, Brazil, all of them already are now at over um, uh, into grid parity, which means it's actually cheaper for solar power. And it continues to go down. In like by next year, the majority of all of the states in the United States will also be grid parity for solar. So our ability to actually have our own power, our ability to actually build it into our own lifestyle, it's, in, it's more in reach now than ever. So that's my question. It's like five years time, time the life, our lives are gonna be so changed just because of what's happening around us. Um, if we start with what is our art, then in five years time, we'll still be doing it. If we start by just doing something for the sake of the money or because we're trying hard to make the money, then we're gonna be beaten by either artificial intelligence or cheaper labor or something at some point anyway. So you might as well say my, my biggest job security is to do what I love, but to do it in a way that actually is sustainable and make sure the environment I'm in is an environment that's sustainable as well. I hope just from what we're kind of seeing here at the Phoenix, you've got an idea that sustainability um, can at the same time be beautiful. And especially when you actually bring nature into it as well, then you end up with not just true beauty, but also true sustainability. And with that said, this is me, Roger, signing off from Taos, New Mexico. Until next week, we'll see you later.